There is only one company to work for in the smart home industry, Skyline Security. Right now is looking for the best of the Grant Cardone following to join their team and expand financially and professionally. Go to joinskyline.com to register. Labeled by Inc. 5000 as the fastest growing company for the last two years in a row, you get to protect families, grow your wealth, and join a team of top producers. Skyline is looking for great people. Go to joinskyline.com. That's joinskyline.com to get started on a brand new 10x career path. Go to joinskyline.com to register. If you're not satisfied with the status quo, if you want to kill the competition, if you're ready to grow your business at massive levels, I want to take three days to spend time with an exclusive group of people, entrepreneurs, business owners, business managers, coaches, and experts, and show you how to get a competitive edge in your business using social media, using e-commerce, using sales, salespeople, cold calls, follow-up, and a sales cycle and a business cycle that I guarantee you will 10x your business in 2018. I'm doing this at the Diplomat Hotel. I'll take care of your hotel room. I'm going to spend three days with you, and we're going to focus on a plan that 10x is your business in 2018. Hey, welcome to Power Players. Grant Cardone here. Every week I bring you somebody in power. Like, there's not a whole lot of people out there, folks, that have actually done it. One, and two, are willing to share about it. I mean, there's a lot of people successful out there, but they're not willing to sit in the chair and answer the questions. Today I have what I consider a friend, like a brother, like a cousin. Like, dude, every time I'm around you, I feel like I know this guy. I've known this guy for a long time. So awesome. Edwin Ariavi, okay, yep. from Columbia, in America now. You yep. might have seen him on Beverly Hills Housewives. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. The Real Housewives yeah. of Beverly Hills. Yeah. This guy's a player, though. What they don't tell you on the real housewives, he's, you're not one of the housewives. Of course not. No, it's all my wife. Well, man. you never know. All that California <laughs> stuff, you never know who the wife is and who the husband is. Yeah. Uh, but I do know, dude, you're a player, okay? I, Thank I, you. In a good way. He's on the, uh, the 500 list four years in a row for the fastest growing company called Skyline Security. Yeah. Company does, what'd you tell me? Uh, 37 million. So we've gone 12, 37 19, million. 24, 37 million. A year. A year, yeah. Born in Bogota, Colombia, so you didn't come for money, right? No, so I was, I was, I was born in Colombia. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, my parents would come to the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, for work. And yeah. then when I was about six years old, uh, my parents decided to bring my older sister and I to the United States for a better opportunity. And when I first came to the U.S., man, it was a total dream. It was just like I had seen on the movies. And uh, my dad picked us up in this like brand new. And, and how old were you at that point? Six. Okay, so you're you're already like, what? what how can a six year old say, "This is a dream"? I was watching movies in uh -huh. Colombia. I'd watch a lot of movies, and so we come to the U.S. My dad picks me up in this brand new 1984 dark green Mustang, takes us to this beautiful home that's got this awesome big pool. I just remember this big pool, um, but unfortunately, that um, dream. Didn't last too long. And uh, two weeks after I came to the United States, my family and I are um, watching TV. I hear the doorbell ring. As I go up to answer it, it's uh, law enforcement kicking it down with guns drawn. Wow. And uh, they push me to the side, and they're there to raid our house and, and uh, arrest where, my where, mother and father. Where were you living? Uh, we were living in a city called Glendora. Okay, uh, out in California. Out in California. And, and what, what, were, what were your parents arrested for? Uh, suspicion of drug trafficking. Uh -huh. So my dad, my mother gets acquitted three months later. My dad gets acquitted eight months later. Uh, but then after that, every 15 months, we were getting raided. Wow. And uh, finally, at 10 years old, we got raided one last time. And uh, this time, they did find my dad guilty. And they put him away for 10 years. And, oh, man. You know, that was a big blow to me. My dad was my... How, how old were you at that point? 10. Yeah. My dad was, was my hero. I just, I admired how he took care of, even though I didn't know what he did for a living. Yeah. What, was, he, was he in the drug trade? He was a little, little bit of drug trafficking here and there. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. But A little I, bit. <laughs> you get arrested for a little bit as much as a lot. <laughs> so even though I didn't know what he did, I, I just admired how he always took care of everyone. <coughs> um, he was... Excuse me. Yeah, no worries. He was, hey, you're bringing up the drug trade. <laughs> <laughs> he was... Um, responsible and he always came through on his word 
Yeah. That's one thing I admire to this day. So and, even though he was working, he was on the, the, the wrong side of yeah. the law, he was showing up every day, was responsible, he was trying to take care of his family. He was trying to take care could. of his family, yeah. So that night, uh, the cops were nice enough to let me talk to him, and him and I had a conversation, which was, you know, you got to become the man of the house, mm -hmm. and uh, I need you to take care of your siblings, and I need you to take care of your mom. Um, her, her family had grown now, so I had a little brother now, a little sister. And then two years after that, we ran out of money. Mm -hmm. And we were just so broke um, that we couldn't afford rent. So my mother found... You're 10 or 12? Now I'm 12. 12. So you're watching your mom struggle. struggle. You and I have a lot of, lot of similarities with that. Like yeah. Um, not being able to help and wanting to. Wanting to. And she just didn't know what to do with money, so she... You know, yeah. we lost it. Uh -huh. And then we were so broke that um, we ended up renting a, a, an apartment in southeast L.A., which is a city called Huntington Park, mm -hmm. which is where I grew up. It's a city that borders Compton, to kind of give you an yeah, idea. Yeah. And uh, we were so broke that we had to share the apartment with eight other people. Wow. So now we had 12 people living in a house. Uh, my mother and siblings and myself are in one bedroom. And um, as you can imagine, it wasn't the best living situation and we were cramped, um, and, uh, but my mom, one thing I always give her credit for, she always gave me love, Yeah. and she was always encouraging me. She was always, Edwin, you have greatness in you, um, and you're gonna be somebody when you grow up. She kept telling me this every day, mm -hmm. and every night I would go to bed, Grant, I literally became obsessed with the number 100,000. Uh -huh. I, I, I would say to myself, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I need to make a hundred grand a year. Yeah. So, so what, what's good? Like, like, why? Why? I mean, do you know? Is there something you've seen now? Is it your dad telling you be responsible, take care of the family? You got to be the. Yeah, like, it's definitely my my dad uh, always taking care of people, uh -huh. um, and obviously me promising my dad that I would take care of my of, of my mother. Uh -huh. um, but it was also seeing my mom just bust her butt, and you know she she didn't know any better, so she just was cleaning offices. Yeah. All the time, and uh, she. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure I, I made her proud. And, uh, you know, the 100,000 obsession with that, the only successful person I sort of knew at that point was my, uh, a friend of ours that was in car sales, and he did $100,000 a year. So I was like, man, mm -hmm. worst comes to worst, I'll sell cars, but I'm gonna make 100 grand a year somehow. And then fast forward to me being 15 years old, um, I ended up landing a job as a telemarketer, selling long distance over the phone. And at that point, I'm just so grateful to have a job and at the same time so fearful that right, I'm gonna right. lose it. Yeah. That I just went in there and I worked my ass off. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, I got some results. I became a supervisor at the age of 16. Now I was making 600 bucks a week. At age 18, I started making $800 a week. I was $900 a week, I was a, I was a manager. I was in charge of six people, but those six people had six people. So essentially I was in charge of 36 people. At, at what age? 18. Wow. Yeah, uh, but more importantly, I'd, I'd become the right hand of the VP of sales for that company. Mm -hmm. So then fast forward to three years later, um, now I'm 21 years old, and he comes into my office and he says to me, hey, Edwin, I'm going to resign, um, and I, I'm going to start this alarm company, and I, I want you to come with me and help me build it. And he says, I can't guarantee you the $60,000 a year that you make now. But if you make this, you can possibly... 21 years old, just yeah. just so everybody understands. I mean, that's listening, or maybe you're just, you know, you're like, oh, he's such a good-looking guy. <laughs> you, you're digging his story, you're stuck on something. 21 years old, the guy's making 60 grand a year. Yeah. Okay, uh, how many years ago is this? 19, 19 that, years that, ago. 19 years ago, that's 100 yeah. and probably 25,000 bucks today. Yeah. That he was making at the age of 21. So your friends have to be telling you, dude, you're crazy to walk away from that. Totally. I mean, yeah. I don't think there was one person that told me I shouldn't walk, but uh -huh. the way I looked at it was, well, this guy's making 200 grand a year. If he's resigning, he right. must be pretty serious. Right, right. So a lot of my success has come from drive and common sense. Uh -huh. um, the mm -hmm. second thing that I thought was, man, if this guy's willing to teach me how to start a company from the ground up, I'm all, this is my shortcut to college, because I never went to college. I graduated uh -huh. with a 1.8 GPA from high school. That's something I'm very proud of. Yeah, but 1.8, man, you can't go much lower. Yeah, that's pretty I mean, low. 1.7, I don't think you get out. <laughs> like, you yeah. just did the minimum. Right I did there. the minimum, for right? sure, yeah. And uh, so I thought this was my big opportunity to learn from somebody. But third, um, I was a big dreamer. And, uh, you know, I was that kid that, at 16 years old, would ditch school, 
I'd go to Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, and I would window shop. And you were, you were in Glendora still? You were, or, oh, no, no. Or, or you were now, in Huntington Park. Now I'm in Huntington Park. Yeah, that, that's a, a much nicer neighborhood. Yeah, not, not as yeah. nice. He's on the edge of Compton. He's basically, that's where the white, almost white people live <laughs> outside of Compton. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and so you're, you're skipping school. So I'm skipping school. At what age? Like six, 17, 16. Okay. Uh -huh. And I was going to Rodeo Drive to window shop. Mm hmm. And I used, after that, I'd go uh, to Hollywood Hills and I would look at all these houses and I'd say, one day, I'm going to be here. And, uh, you know, I was listening to Ed Milet the other day and he was talking about touching, who was on your show, Yeah, talking about touching the dream. Right, and right. Then, Visiting the house, looking at the cars. Exactly. And then, uh, you know, Tim Starr was saying about exposing yourself to a better lifestyle. Uh -huh. And looking back at it now, that's exactly what I was doing. And, you know, sometimes you get stuck in this bubble where you don't know that anything else exists, and that's why you don't go after it. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but at that point, I just I became obsessed with uh, wanting a better lifestyle for myself. So, so look, but you know, speaking of the bubble now, Ed, when yeah. you you could have gone the other way because like you you had every reason to say my dad went to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got this bad situation. We came from Bogota. We live in Huntington Park. We live in a poor neighborhood. There's eight people in the family. I've been listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then, like, because your bubble, like, if it goes back to the, the, the five people you are, an accumulation of the five people, mm -hmm. you, you actually contradict that concept. Because yeah, you totally. got outside of that bubble. I got outside that bubble and I started hanging out. You know, another thing that I think about is from back then was, you know, at 16 years old, I got recruited to do a little bit of modeling uh -huh. and it took me to, to, to the West Side. And I just, I love the way people dressed, I love the women out there. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the, um, the food, and I just, I wanted that lifestyle. So, you know, ultimately, going after my dreams is really what allowed me to resign uh, from a job that was paying me 60 grand a year. Um, but I, I think this is a key point. You know, I'm 21 years old, and I made the decision that I wanted to make 100 grand today, not uh -huh. five years from now, today. And I looked at my options. I knew I wasn't going to be a rock star anytime soon. I knew yeah. I wasn't going to be an actor anytime soon. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't going to be a pro baller anytime soon. So at 21, if you want to make that type of money, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but the only way you could do it is sales. And I knew that was my vehicle, sales. And then it was just about the opportunity that was given to me. And I'm a big fan of uh, finding a vehicle that gives you margins uh -huh, on, uh -huh. on, your, uh, on what you're getting paid on commission but it allows you to scale. Yeah, and we're gonna, when we come back from break, I wanna talk about the margin, the scaling, because we talked about that in my office, yeah. and I'm like, so many people are missing this, okay? Yeah. This guy, look, if this guy can do it, you got <laughs> two people sitting in front of you. I lost my dad when I was 10, he lost his dad when he was 10. Yeah, well, he's still alive. Uh, in fact, no, I've been you taking lost care of him. Yeah, you lost I him for lose. a period of time to I prison, did, yeah. right? Like, yeah. he's not there every day. He's not there to coach you, he's not there to mentor you, he's not there to guide you. Uh, we both grew up in environments where a single mother did not know how to produce income. Uh, I don't know if your other brothers and sisters turned out the same way you did. Yeah, so my little brother and sister, they, you know, they basically, entrepreneur, they making $37 million so, a year? So my brother is, is my right-hand guy at the office. Okay, okay. Uh, my youngest sister's up and down, you know, we, yeah, she's, yeah. she's a work in progress, yeah. but she's, she's, doing, she's starting to but do we well. But see, everybody's then, got their path, now, and the power players find their way to this seat, right? So, so this guy made it out of poverty. Yeah. Out of his problems, okay, out of living with eight people, driving a Lambo. People, yeah. Only Lambo I've ever been in was his car, by the way, in Hollywood. <laughs> I you scared know, you, didn't I? You did scare me a little bit. Yeah, we dude. went pretty fast. Okay. Um, so when we come back from break, we're going to talk about, hey, how do you get out of where you are? How do you start really making the dream a reality? This guy's a big deal. He, he, he talks about dreaming a lot, touching the dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to come back and talk about drive and common sense, what's that ma made, and how grateful and being fearful Mm -hmm. I like that comment, dude. I'm scared all the time. Yeah, I'm scared Are you too. still scared now? I'm scared of be, being broke uh -huh. all the time. I'm scared of having to go back to that lifestyle. And yeah. I think, I, again, I think a lot, of my, uh, a lot of my success, I think, came from having a taste of money. Because when I was a little yeah. kid, before my dad went to jail, pretty much had whatever I wanted. And then it just gets taken away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you go to the opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. And then you realize money is options, Once right? you it's get not a taste, everything. man, you just need, it's like the drug dealer. Just take, try it one time. <laughs> Same thing yeah. with success, man. If you yeah. can just get a little taste of it yeah. and it has some people around you saying you can do it. Okay, we'll be right back from break. This is Power Players.
There is only one company to work for in the smart home industry, Skyline Security. Right now is looking for the best of the Grant Cardone following to join their team and expand financially and professionally. Go to joinskyline.com to register. Labeled by Inc. 5000 as the fastest growing company for the last two years in a row, you get to protect families, grow your wealth, and join a team of top producers. Skyline is looking for great people. Go to joinskyline.com. That's joinskyline.com to get started on a brand new new 10x career path. Go to joinskyline.com to register. Hey, welcome back to Power Players. Today I have with me a self-made, that's right, he made himself, I'm sure God had a little bit of yes. like, like, like uh, you know, a little, little contribution in there, but a lot of blessings. He had a lot of choices. This guy right here sitting next to me had a lot of choices, a lot of different ways he could have gone. And he made enough of the right choices to end up in that chair, chair and, and, and we call him a power player. 37 million bucks a year is what his company does. He's got a net worth of about $40 million. He is the top 20 under 40 in the security business, right? You've mm -hmm. got a company that does, I think you've been on the Fortune 500 list. Not uh, fortunate, it's no, Inc. No, 5,000, you know, fastest 5, growing yeah, yeah. companies three years See, in I a row. I got Inc. 500, man, yeah. it's Inc. 5,000. Yeah, three years in a row. How um, many employees? We have 100 office employees. Yeah. Um, we have probably 100 installers nationwide. We're, yeah. we're in 30 states. And we have probably over 300 sales reps. Um, so, but the best part is I, I feel like we're just getting started, man. So, so he's born in Columbia. He lives in Los Angeles now. He's living the high life now. He's on TV all the time. Um, <laughs> but, but check this out, okay? This guy, this guy at 21 years old is making 60 grand a year, leaves the job. Yeah. Walks away from a job that today would pay one hundred twenty-five thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. No security. No security. No money. No promise. And I was paying all the bills at that point. Uh -huh. So it wasn't like I just left the job. Like I, I was paying all the bills at my house. So Edwin, what, what, why, why did you believe in yourself enough to know, hey, I got to make that change? And when does a person make that change? I, I'm glad you brought up belief because I think belief, faith, mm -hmm. and, de and declaring mm -hmm. is all one uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. And you know, to me, part of believing was. My mom telling me as a little boy that I, was, that I had greatness in me. Part of that was also going back to my past successes. No matter how small they were, I used those to kind of build confidence. Uh -huh. The third thing was, like you've, you've mentioned a lot of times, uh, on, I started taking Cardone University and I love it by the way, but you were talking about you have to sell yourself on who you are. And I sold myself at a young age that I was great at sales, uh -huh. I was a great trainer, and I was a great leader influencer and then the last thing which is probably the most important thing which you also mentioned at the beginning i just felt like god was with me at all the time yeah and i felt like he would put the right people in front of me uh for the unknown right because there's and, for, and, for the unknown yeah because uh -huh. i focused on my strengths know. what yeah, you don't yeah, know yeah, yeah you know like yeah, i yeah yeah in, yeah in 2009 we had six office employees uh -huh. i had no idea how we were going to go from six office employees to to uh, yeah, to to a hundred office employees. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea how we were going to go from one state to thirty states. Right. Um, but one day, I just I said, you know what? I'm going to grow this company. I'm going to uh, grow a company. Well, first of all, I made a decision that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the first ten years that I did it, I did it because I loved the money. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't sold on this. Yeah. Being so because because we were talking on break. I'm not. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. You, yeah no, but you said something on the break. He was making a bunch of money in 2009 and got, you talk, you, you, you said something to me in there about something happened and, yeah, so, and you quit producing. Yeah, so. And what, what, what happened? Did you? So if you don't grow, yeah. you're going to quit. You're going to burn out. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think what happened to me from 99 to 2009 is because I didn't see anyone doing better things than I was. Uh -huh. I was where I was at. I was the number one guy. And I never saw people doing better, so I just thought this is as good as it gets. Yeah. So it wasn't until 2009 that uh, the investor that I used to do uh, business with decided to get out and, and focus more on commercial, and we were mostly residential. Found a new investor, and this investor had uh, shown me dealers that were way bigger than us. Uh -huh. And the first thing I thought was, man, if those guys are doing it, there should be no reason I can't. I can't, I can't right, do it. Right. But then my, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, tells me this mind-boggling. Um, uh, statement, which was, um, Edwin, why do you keep investing in things that you don't know about? Uh, I've wow. never seen you wow. invest 
in the one thing that you're an expert at, uh, which wow. was the alarm industry. Wow. Wow. So I would invest um, in, on my sales guys, but I never invested in the organization uh -huh. to make it bigger. So I, I always love saying this, which is um, you have to commit before you get what you need. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, and, and that's actually faith. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The exactly. opposite of that is faith not accompanied by action is dead. Right. So in 2009, I committed uh, to making this my career. I committed by hiring a CFO for the first time in 10 years. And that was hard because it's like, damn, I got to pay this guy. Money, man. I got to pay this guy 150 grand. I mean, that's yeah. like a used Ferrari I could yeah. buy. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But I just I went ahead and, and did And this it. is why I say, man, growing is unselfish yeah. and not growing is selfish. Because mm -hmm. look, when he, in 2009, he's like, I got I to gotta buy, buy a CFO. Basically, yeah. that's what you're doing. You're purchasing a CFO. Purchase a CFO, yeah. And he, he immediately thought, I could buy a used Ferrari for that. That's exactly what I thought. Because you're, <laughs> the, the, the guy that's trying to get rich or trying to create power or trying to create an organization, you're like, but I could use that money for me. And that's selfish. Yeah. When Edwin became unselfish because he had this boredom, you talked to me in my office about, yeah, man, bored. I got bored. I got bored. You I'm didn't use the word burnout in there. Yeah, bored. You said, I got bored, which felt like burnout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I wasn't growing. Yeah, because I, I, I wasn't growing. And uh, it wasn't until then that I, I, I realized that this is my career, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, that everything changed. Uh -huh. And then I started investing back into the company. I, I now, again, commit before you get what you want. I didn't have the sales yet, yet I just got 50 office employees. And then that made me get off my butt to go after it, uh -huh. you know, because now I had to bring in the sales because I just invested all now, kinds now, of money. Now you had to because now you're back to fear and grateful and fear. Yeah. And then I did that again in 2014. I bought a new building, spent $2 million mm -hmm. on the building, and then uh, I spent like almost a million bucks on decor, and I'm like, shit, now I got to fill this place up. Right, right, right. You know, it's right. like build that they will come, um, but it just, it makes you, once you commit, it makes you now go after it. There's no going back now. Yeah. Keep yeah. in mind, so for everybody thinking, oh, the guy's making $30 million a year, now he's spending $2 million in an office, $150,000 for a CFO. The guy came from nothing. Okay, mm -hmm. so don't, don't understand. He, the whole time, he's coming from nothing and trying to figure out how not to go back to nothing. Right. So you, you're talking about grateful, okay, drive, common sense. How do people find this stuff? The dreamer, touching the dream. How mm -hmm. does somebody out there right now that's like, I want to be like Edward? How do they find us in them? So again, I think you believe, which I touched on already, yeah. uh, you gotta have massive work ethic. Mm -hmm. I think for me, my insecurity of not going, that's one of my biggest insecurities is that I never went, I, I never graduated uh, from college and I only had a, that 1.8 GPA. So I had to sell myself on working, outworking everybody yeah, yeah, to make yeah. up for my studies. I don't know if that was true or not, but that's what I sold myself on. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you know, third thing is you have to have self-discipline. I think one of the biggest problems with commission jobs is we have too much freedom. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you have to, even though no, you have to work as if somebody's over your shoulder looking to fire you, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the fourth one for me is perseverance. And I think that's, not, that's something that you're not born with. That's something you develop. And you develop by falling on your ass and getting right back up and continuing to push forward. And then the last thing is you have to have integrity. If you want to do something for a long period of time, mm -hmm. you can't screw people over. And, um, you know, a lot in business is building relationships. And the way you build relationships is um, uh, with doing things the right way. Yeah. So how did you get this, dude? Like, like how did you, like, why you? You know, um, I think people are watching this, oh, I don't have that, or my mom didn't tell me to be great. My mom didn't tell me to be great. His mom said he could be great. Mm -hmm. So my mom didn't tell me that. My mom was like, hey, be grateful. <laughs> she did, she, she'd be grateful. You know, your mom probably told you both. You can do great things. You, you, you have greatness in you and be grateful. But yeah. how does the person out there making 60 grand or 80 grand or 90 grand or, and, and by the way, does money even matter? Like, yeah, I, th I think money matters as far as options, you know. Uh -huh. um, I love the whole notion of success is your duty. Uh -huh. You know, for me, I, I tied 10% of, uh, of, of what I earn. And for me, that's important because that's bringing people to God. Um, I take care of my family. I have to succeed so I can take care of them and give them, um, you know, um, a better life. So you have to want to succeed. And I think 
the problem is a lot of times we're the ones that tell ourselves we can't do it. Uh -huh. And I know it sounds cliche, but you can do anything you want in life. You just have to believe and start taking action. And I think what happens is when you start taking act, um, fear paralyzes you. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people say, I want to do this, but then they don't take action. Mm -hmm. um, so part of it for me, I think to, to answer your last question is you have to find a goal that's going to make you want to get off your ass. Mm -hmm. Right. And that purpose has to be big enough, bigger than right, anything. Right. 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 Um, and I think a lot of people, the reason they don't is because they don't, they don't find the right purpose. That purpose isn't big enough to get mm -hmm. them off their ass. Mm -hmm. So like and a quick example for me, I sort of say I got tricked into success because uh, one of the first things I did um, after I made my first $5,000 in a week um, was I went to an open house. And I remember my, fun, my friends making fun of me. Why are you going to go to an open house, dude? You don't even have a college degree. Relax, dude. You just started your business, dude. A, a, a house is a 30-year commitment. Right, right. Why don't you wait to see if this business is actually working, going to work out? But my thought to them was, Man, I'm worth a hundred grand a year, no matter what I do. Right, right. And this is back then. I think I'm worth a lot more now. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm worth a hundred grand a year. It doesn't matter if this business goes to crap. Whatever I do, I'm going to be successful at it. Uh -huh. um, so I went to this open house, and then they gave me a blueprint. They said, "Hey, Edwin, uh, you need to come up with twelve thousand dollars down. Uh -huh. um, you need to make fourteen hundred bucks." He's doing the math. Now. Payment. Yeah, Just doing straight the out of millionaire, uh, the, the 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 millionaire booklet. Yeah, that, that's somebody's going to give you the math class, folks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. So, so um, it's funny because then I was like, well, I make 1500 bucks in a day. I got 29 days to save. And then I just, so then I went back. Yeah. And just like you said, I looked at all my bills. My bills were uh, 4000 a month. So I knew I needed to save $1,000 um, for my uh, payments. Yeah. Right? 1000 for the IRS. You always want to pay the IRS and savings. And then the other 1000 was to buy my mom's uh, house, the, her dream house. Um, and then I set a date on when I was going to do it by when are you going to have success? When are you going to have success by? And you have to set that date. And that date has to be like your life depends on it. Like yeah, your kid's uh -huh. life depends on it. There's yeah, no yeah. way in hell you're not going to hit it. And so then I, I drove my mom to the house, took her. I said, Mom, this house will be yours in 90 days. So I committed. Wow. She starts crying. I start crying. I said, even if it's not this one, it's going to be one that looks just so, like it. Right. So then it was about doing 8 to 12 deals a week, right? And who's got my money? What's in my what's in my, my what's in my toilet back there? You were taking who's, a leak. Yeah, huh? who's, who's got my right money? Right there, right there, yeah. where you're taking a leak, where the men take a. Psh. Yeah. So what was crazy about that, Grant, is I can't tell you how many deals I got at 10:30 at night, yeah. and I can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit at 8 p.m. But because I had a purpose, I would I, literally the the what I would remember was my mom sweating, carrying these buckets of water, and I remember her uh, crying because um, our situation was so bad and you know that that pushed me yeah and yeah, yeah. because I had that pushing me I, I got that deal and the way you get confidence is with results yeah yeah you know so if you mm -hmm. compare to if you compare me to someone that was more talented than I was he stops knocking at 8 o'clock I keep knocking until 10 30 so I end up getting a deal so now my confidence goes up his doesn't stay here because every day he sells, yeah. he doesn't sell, his confidence goes down. Right, right. And then you have this separation. So I believe that mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I made, if I would, when I made that $5,000, if I wouldn't have done that. If you wouldn't I, have a place for the money to go. Yeah, if I wouldn't have found my purpose, yeah, yeah, I would yeah, have, yeah. my purpose would have became my bills. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, And the exactly. problem is, my bills, then I would have taken three weeks off. Because yeah, my bills were only four grand. grand. I was like, oh, exactly. I'm on top of the world. Right, right. And then I, I just, that then 90 days created a habit in me. Mm -hmm. And then results, I was like, oh, shoot, this shit works. Sorry, yeah, I didn't yeah, say yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm right. like, this yeah. thing works. And after that, I just started applying this formula, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is basically declare. As soon mm -hmm. as you declare, well, I love that, you man. take action. I love that. And then you have, su the, have success. Have success is the date on when you're going to do it by. Mm -hmm. And using that simple formula... I've been able to acquire so many things, man. I so, could, so I could go declare, on and on and tell you all the yeah, things I've gotten. Yeah, look, look, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's living the life. I'm telling yeah. you, folks. Okay, uh, so he came from nothing, started in telemarketing. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah. Talks about sales like it's, 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 he was having sex with Eve. <laughs> I mean, he loves sales. You can hear him. When he talks about it, mm -hmm. he doesn't talk about it in a degrading way. He doesn't talk about it like, I hate sales. He, you don't yeah. hear Edwin talking about rejection and disappointment and discouragement. Look what he's talking about.
yeah. drive, common sense, big dreamer. How important was it for you to see those big homes in Beverly Hills or Hollywood Hills or the Rodeo Drive? How much do you think that like fueled? It, it was huge. Possibility. It was huge. And, uh -huh. uh, you know, I think that was a big reason getting out of that bubble of Huntington Park. Because, again, I've seen a lot of people stay in that bubble. Right. And what happens is as you get older, then it gets harder for you to get out of that bubble because then all your considera considerations are the voices that tell you you can't yeah. do something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want to go. Or that you can do something. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Right? I don't want to go hang out over there because I'm going to look stupid. Like, yeah, I remember yeah. the first time I went to a fine restaurant, I ordered my steak well done, and it was in front of a big group. They all laughed at me. Uh -huh, because I, I, I didn't know you were supposed to order a steak medium rare or medium uh -huh. i ordered it well done and this was like a 200 dollars steak but my mom always told me order them well done so i'm like well done and the whole table just laughed at me why 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 i mean what's wrong with well done i mean um, i don't eat it well done either but it's apparently that's not what you it's do inappropriate with, or something yeah with fine steak you're not supposed oh. to do that oh, okay um but you know i look at situations even now um, i'm surprised you were in beverly hills at the time Oh well, yeah, I'd go. Maybe 19... they were laughing at you, dude, because they're all vegetarians over there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, at 19 years old, I would, I, I'd like to, I'd go to you, nice you like places. Nice I like nice things, and and then I started thinking, man, this is this is nice. I want to yeah. live out here. I want I want to do those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. Um, but I always, you know, if you ask me what what defines me, I I always like opportunity to get out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. to to go after new heights. Yeah, you know, and, and sometimes that is hanging out with people that you're a little bit intimidated by because they're doing way better. I still get intimidated by by uh -huh. people that are doing way better than I. But I I still force myself to to hang out with these people because, um, you know, uh, that's how I'm going to grow. Yeah, you know. So I belong to this organization. I'll tell you a quick story on well, this, yeah. so everybody can be uh, maybe relate to this. But um, I belong to this organization YPO, and we're yeah. part of the Bel Air chapter. And, Got to uh, be a lot of rich kids over there. A lot of them, it's a couple billionaires. Right. So, anyways, we meet once a month. My forum. It's about ten of us, uh -huh. and the idea is we all share our um, experiences, whether it's business, family, whatever it is. Right. And right. you're not supposed to give advice. You're supposed to give your experiences, right? Yeah. Um, and hopefully, I'm not giving out too much info. But um, this I can talk about. It's the first day, and I'm supposed to introduce myself. And I'm so intimidated because there's a lot of guys doing well there. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Dude, I start sweating. Like I ran a marathon, wow. and it's not stopping in front of these ten guys, wow. man. How, how long ago was this? Uh, this is about three years ago. Okay, so you're 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 successful. You're making money. You got the big house, the car, yeah. success, yeah. and you're still feeling a little insecure. Oh yeah, I mean I start sweating like, and I was like, just please stop, please stop, and I just kept sweating more and more wow. and more. And uh, but again, those are the situations that you know help you grow. And, and, and you know those guys were comforting. And man, don't worry about yeah. it. And da da da. And, yeah. You know, I've learned so much from from just hanging out with those guys. They're doing way bigger bigger things. How than important is it for Edwin to and and for the viewer to to like get themselves in those situations? The YPOs, the it, it's huge. I mean, you you spend you, money you, to do it. Do you spend time to do it? Do you travel to do it? Um, well. You, and that you have to be sort of recruited, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but if it's not YPO, but like, like if it's, hey, I'm going to go hang out in a mastermind group. Like we're doing a gig here April 6th, 7th, and 8th. Right? Yeah, you want to hang out with people that think differently, uh -huh. right? Because if you, you know, don't get me wrong, I still hang out with all my high school buddies and all yeah. that good stuff, and I still go back to where I grew up. But um, you, you got to hang out with people that are doing better. You can't just hang out with people that are going to tell you how great you are. Right, right. You know, um, I always try to hang out with people that are, and again, I hang out with a lot of people, but yeah, I always yeah. make time to hang out pe with people that are doing way better things because yeah. they, they encourage me. They, they inspire and they, they you to me. the next level, yeah, right? So that, that's the stars, right? Yeah. I want to go travel there, right? So so you tithe 10% of your yes. gross income. Mm -hmm. So that would be a lot of money in your case. Actually, not gross, net. Oh, okay, it should, probably net. should so, be gross. So, so net, yeah, yeah, I think it should be gross. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I'm getting there. So, so uh, I can tell you since I started doing that as well, Yeah. Uh, and I, I didn't do it purposely, yeah. my business just took off. I'm telling you guys, you guys, you guys the, the, the I thing started that, tithing in 2011. I finally said, you know what, just check, take it out of my draft. Right, Writing right. the checks a little harder, right? Right, right, um, right. And ever since 2011, you look at my stats. Totally. You spend you know? money, you spend money. If you get rid of money and you have the right purpose in life to provide for others, help yeah. others, you'll make more money. Sure. When, when you tithe 10%, uh, whether it's the net or the gross, yeah. um, do you invest 10% in yourself every year, you think? Um, 
I'm and sorry, by the I, way, would that be a good calculation for people to use? I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, one thing that I've always done is I like I always like to stay hungry, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. In, I, I never like having too much liquid because uh -huh. I think if you have too much liquid, Look, liquid. You, you're talking about money sitting in the bank. Yeah, you, you, yeah. If you have too much liquid, it just gets you a little lazy. Yeah, totally. You know, it gets you a little complacent. Totally. And you put that all in. You yeah. know, it's like, oh shoot, I get, I gotta get back to work, okay. man. You know, um, back to a little bit of that fear. Back to exactly back to a little bit of that fear. Right. Um, but you make the the right investments here and there, you, you'll do very well. But the point I was going to touch on when I first started, mm -hmm. I used to break my checks into three parts. So I'd, if I get a a five thousand dollar, we have so many similarities. Yeah, if we'd have a t if I'd get a, if I'd get a ten thousand dollar check, I would live off three thousand uh dollars, -huh. and that three thousand I lived on it like I was I was balling. Yeah, but the yeah, other three yeah. thousand, the other three thousand for IRS and savings, and the other three thousand was a reserve account that no one can touch. Uh -huh. That was just if I ever, you know, you know, God forbid something happened to me, I couldn't work for two years, you'd go into that fund, um, and I always kept that. But because of that. If I wanted to live on a five thousand uh, dollar a week uh, pay, I'd have to make fifteen grand. Right, right. So it would push me. Right, right. And and again, it, you ha again, you have to have the self discipline. Do you see a lot of people change their living standards before they change their production standards? Like they um, they, they they make a little more money and they spend it. Yeah, I see a lot of that, and, uh -huh. I, and I think that's why I love this rule of splitting yeah. your check three ways. Right, right. I think it gives you. Um, a reality of where you really, sh how much uh -huh. money you should be spending, mm -hmm. right? Um, so again, for me, if, and I remember five So no grand, matter what you're making, if it's 10 grand, a third, a third, a third. Yes. If it's 15 grand, then you can only increase your, your spending on self. Yeah. By that third of the 15. By 5,000, yeah. Now The that, other two would go up as yeah. well. I like that because but, they're all connected. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what's nice about that reserve is sometimes you'll have an opportunity, like I've had, you know, Many times, you know, I, I bought a, a, a house on the sand, uh -huh. and this lady had bought it for four million. She um, was uh, going through a divorce. She just wanted to get rid of it. I was able to pick it up for three point two. Uh -huh. You know, this last house I just bought, lady. Um, How many houses I bought you got, man? I got about six or seven. Dude, you got seven houses. Yeah, but. Three are my I, main ones. Oh so. my gosh! I, you guys know I'm about to give him a spanking in public right now. And a building. In a nice building. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, my, the thing is not getting comfortable, you know. Uh, I wanted a specific house. My, ho my dream house, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to overlook the entire city. Uh -huh. And I wanted to be on the edge of the hill. I didn't want a yeah, house in yeah. front of me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the house that I had five years ago, I was in Hollywood Hills, but I still had a house in front of me. Uh -huh. you didn't so like I was that like, man, I, I love this house, but it wasn't my dream as a right, kid. Right, right, so right. I kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And... Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've, I've been eyeing this house for the last four years, uh -huh. um, and it finally goes on the market, and I see it just drop, bomb, bomb, bomb in price. And finally, and you know, I, ready. I, I'm ready. I end up picking this house for 1.2 million less than what the previous owner had bought it for. Yeah, people so that's, do lose money on homes, folks. Yeah. Uh, well, this lady uh, is, you know, it's 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 public knowledge. It's it's a. Uh, uh, Megan Ellison, who's the daughter of Larry Ellison. Okay, okay. Uh, fourth richest man of the world. Yeah. So she had just sold the house next to it for thirty-six million. Would you pay? So for she the made house? six million. Would you pay for the house that you? I paid four point one. Okay. And she bought okay. it for five point two. Yeah. Um, she didn't. It's yeah, a she round, didn't need it's it a rounding error for her. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, yeah, Edwin took advantage of me. I lost a quarter. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Hey, I want to go back to one other thing right now. Okay. How how the money motivated? Because I hear you talk about money a lot, and I don't mm -hmm. want people to get confused with that. Because a lot of people out there, because of your training and education, you're like, oh, money's not the most important thing. You've heard Edwin talk about giving money, taking care of his parent, uh, taking care of his mom, uh, taking be an care of being inspiration to people too, right? And being an inspiration. So, how important is the money thing to you? Very important. I think uh, yeah. it, it gives me. I, lo it, I love this, dude. Nobody it, talks about this. It, it gives me options yeah, yeah. Uh, to do certain things. You know, uh -huh. uh, it gives me options to help people. It gives me options to to inspire to people. buy six homes. To buy six homes. You got yeah. you got to dump some of those houses, dude. I'm gonna. Yeah. You know, when this is over, I'm gonna sit down and have a conversation with you. Well, so one of the be beauties about our industry. You, you don't have any debt on those homes. Uh, yeah, I have some debt. Okay. I have some debt on, on those. The six homes. But uh, no. On four of them. Okay. But are you it, rent it's, a, it's a nice rental. Rent yeah. Rent no, I rent them. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I make okay. money off them. Okay. I rent them. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So I rent them, and the beauty about I'm our. feel a little better about you, but it's still not real yeah. good. No, the, the beauty about our industry is that uh, it's a cash flow cow. Yeah. And being, being in the security industry. Being in the security industry. Yeah. And now, um, so that 
that allows me, if, if you have cash, you don't need to sell your houses, right? Because uh, it's you just like you do, right? You invest them. Yeah. Um, but my industry, I feel like we're just getting started. Yeah. So now our industry's evolved into the internet of things. Mm -hmm. So I look at our industry as the next luxury industry that's going into a necessity. That means no matter how broke you are, you're gonna have it. Yeah. So right now only 2% of people have home automation. In 10 years, 75% of people will have home wow. automation. So I look at it like cell phone industry in the early 80s and early 90s, it was only for affluent people. Now, no matter how broke you are, you have cell phone. You can go jobless for six months, you yeah. have a cell phone. Yeah. Same thing with cable, same thing with internet. The same thing's gonna happen in the alarm industry, um, in, in home automation industry. In fact, in CES, it was the number one thing talked about this year. Last year it was self-driving cars. Now CES it's, is what? Uh, it's the electronic show, biggest okay. electronic yeah. show. They were talking about secu home security. Home automation, uh -huh. the internet of things. Yeah. And we're at the forefront, and I feel like we're just getting started. Mm -hmm. So even though I've had this success. So how big is the opportunity at your company? Like, could you do, could you do 137 million a year rather than 37? Yeah, my, my goal is to do 300 million. My goal is to so do it's, So uh, it's 300 million. million a real number? Yeah. Per year? Yeah. What, what does Edwin have to do? So to, I want to touch on, on that. I'm glad yeah, you asked. Yeah, yeah. So... One of my... We're going to go a little long here just because I, I want to see what it, what it takes this guy to do to 10x. One of my big secrets to, to my success, which I didn't talk about, was at the phone company that I worked for, they used to make a study for an hour before we got on the phones. Uh -huh. And you know, You're back at 19? Back at 15. Okay. So we had to literally study for an hour. Uh -huh. And we had to then go and sell. Well, I did that for six years straight. And that got my mindset to where it needed to be. Right. Right? Um, the mistake I made is at 21, because I started my own business and I started doing pretty well, I gave up on the study. Yeah. And the self, you know, uh, personal growth. The self improvement. Personal growth, yeah. right? And it wasn't until literally a month and a half ago, we joined Cardone University. We and, sold in Cardone University, just yeah. so you know. He pays for big, it just like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, big, big fan. And I just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, holy crap. This is. I started thinking big again, you know, because what yeah, happens yeah. is you start doubt, you, you, no matter how successful you are, you start getting doubt. And the doubt that I that started to uh, kind of come to me was you're not smart enough. You, you've mm -hmm. taken it to 37 million. Now you're trying to take it to 100 million. Now you're trying yeah. to take it to a billion. That's yeah, a whole satisfied. different level. Be grateful, be man. Be, exactly. You got plenty, man. Take what you got. And since I've been studying, so now I'm back to I study an hour. I, I wake up at uh, 430. Um, I'm on study by five. Mm -hmm. I'm done by six. Six fifteen. I'm busy. Fitness. Dude, busy guy. Okay, he's doing a TV show with with Bravo. He's running a company with a hundred employees in house and another hundred service people. And he's finding he's finding the sorry he's making the time to study. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's huge. And since I've done that, man, it's I mean it's like my eyes are open uh -huh. open to a new world. And I'm like, what? what I, th I think. I think right? If I would have not given up studying, I think I'd probably be a billionaire right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I seriously believe that. So now I'm back at it. Dude, let's, let's meet again another year from now and do, do this. Maybe we wait to the end of the year. It's only seven, eight months away and, and talk about, okay, what, what you've done. I, yeah. what, what, what do you think you'd have to do? Three things you'd have to do to go from 37 million to 300 million. Uh, well, we'd have to hire, uh, so right now we have 300 sales reps. We'd have to get to 200. Um, you, you have how uh, many so, sales reps No, we, right have, we have about 300 right now. Uh -huh. We'd have to get to about 1,500 sales reps. Okay. So one of the things You'd that I've already talked X, about. 5X your sales reps. Yep. We got to, my goal is to open up 30 offices, you know, across the U.S. Um, we have to do about 50, to do 300, we have to do about, a hundred thousand accounts a year. Mm -hmm. Right so, now we're doing twenty. Yeah, twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Yeah. So, so you have so to five, five x. Five x. You have to five x your sales. Yeah. Five x your your your. How yeah. many offices? That, you that have part now? I'm sold on. It's it's you know what, what the so operation. How do we get there? Bro? The, the operations. Somebody's going to do it. Is yeah. this possible? Oh, it's possible. Okay. It's uh, you know the operations. You got to get the right people to start falling in, and I think you know. Well, right now, it sounds like you got to get any people. Yeah, no, I got to get a lot of people. But on the upper sell side, I yeah. think on the sell side, I think we're just gonna, I think we're just getting started. Like, yeah. So how I'm gonna get there too is, if you look to, at my six competitors. Yeah. Um, so we're a mid-sized company, and then there's like your big giant, like, who's, who's kind who's of a, a giant, uh, Vivint. Okay. Right. They're kind of a league yeah. of their own. Yeah. Um, and then you have 
five mid-sized companies were one of them, right? Mm -hmm. You talk to all those companies, they're, they're talking about retiring in the next three years. I'm like, they're man, gonna I, sell out. Yeah, I'm just getting started, man. I, I right, wanna right. outlast the competition. You know, um, I'm a big believer, man. You make decent money for a long time consistently, it becomes a lot of money. Um, I think, I mean, that's been my thing 19 years, and that's why I talked about integrity being such a big thing. When you're trying to do you're something the long, long term, yeah, yeah, you can't exactly. screw people over. So look, folks, this is what he talked about, okay? Goals on dates, money motivated, margins and volume. You got a business that's great for margins and volumes, by yeah. the way. We talk about the right vehicle, finding the right vehicle. If you're out there, you're looking for a job, you're looking to make money, what's a salesperson making at your company? Uh, anywhere from 60000 to a million dollars. You know, that, that man right there, he makes quite a bit of money there. See his gold rolly? How much you make a year? On camera? <laughs> IRS knows, dude, you can tell me. Uh, Half a million dollars. Perseverance, self-discipline, massive work ethic, okay? If those are things that you like, like, like just forget the money for a second. If you had those things in your life, would your life change? See, that's what I look at. Dude. Yeah. That's the people I want around me talking about responsibility, commitment, dreaming big. Yeah. Like when you, when you shared this with me, Edwin, like it inspires me. Thank you. Yeah. My life is richer because you came here today. Thank you. And, and, I, and, I know, and I know that your life is richer because you've been around somebody here for the last 40 mm -hmm. minutes. It's in power. There's producing power in their life. The guy doesn't have it all figured out. No. Right? And you, and you can't, uh, what, another big thing for me is you, you can't, when something bad happens to you, you can't blame people. Yeah. Uh, you got to take responsibility no Dude. matter what. And as long as you take responsibility, you can't be mad at anybody. Yeah, biggest so that, mistake you've ever made. Um, not thinking big enough, but yeah. the study, right? Yeah. I wish I could go back yeah. to studying yeah. and stuff, but. No, notice it's never the biggest mistake somebody else ever made. Nobody ever asked you that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's the biggest mistake somebody else made in your life? It's yeah. always the mistake you made. That's why he's talking about responsibility. He's talking about dreaming. It's very practical what he's telling you. He's talking about it's drive common sense, and huh? common sense. Yeah. Grateful yeah. and fearful. Mm -hmm. Does fear still play a part for you today? Yeah, all the time. What, what are you scared of? I think, again, being broke, and I think I'm very humble, uh -huh. um, and I think it's because I realize that the same way God gave me success, he can quickly take it away. But do you think um, that that's true? Do you think God takes things away from people? I think if... Or people screw it up? I think it's, a, it's yeah, you got to act, right? Um, but I think yeah. people screw it up, but I think also, you know... I mean, God's if, not going to come down and say, hey, I'm taking all your real estate from you, Grant. Well, I think if, you know... I mean, when, he's probably got his, like, he's probably got his hands full with other stuff. Well, he's like, okay, I'm God. We got a big war going on over here. <laughs> and we got Grant with too much real estate. So, and then we got Edwin over here buying houses. Let's take Edwin's shit. Because <laughs> that was dumb. No, so, you know, I think when you're not humble and, yeah. and you start taking, to my point, you stop, being, you st you stop with the self-discipline. Stop with you the You stop with the work ethic. Right, you stop, right, right, you right. know, doing all these things that have made you great, yeah. it gets taken away from you, right? Uh -huh. But again, I think if you seek wisdom, yeah. right? So yeah. I'm a big Proverbs guy. Uh -huh. You seek wisdom, you're going to have success in different parts of your life. Favorite it, proverb? Um, Put you on the spot now. Probably 22, I think it's 22.1, which is uh, be careful what you, uh, you know, your tongue can give you life or death. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm huge on declaring. If you say to yourself, you said that over and over. Man. If you say to yourself, you can't do something, you're never going to be as big, right? If, yeah, you, if yeah, you say to yeah. yourself, I can never be like Grant, I'll never own a jet like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guess what? That's where it starts. Totally, man. If, the de the you, declarations, I've, I've heard three people say this to me this week. Declarations. Yeah. Make the claim to the universe. Make the claim. Make, make it public. Claim. Yeah. Okay, Edwin, dude, you're awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thank hey, you. can't wait to have you in the chair right there. Okay, be an example, folks. Pay the price. Pay attention to what you're doing. Produce power in your life. You want to give all your money away? Edwin's in a position to give more money away than you are. <laughs> Bottom line is all of you people out there like, I want to help other people. Good. Then get successful because right now, if you don't have power, you can't help. Period. Mother Teresa could have helped more people if she'd have gotten more bank. Mother Teresa, I love you. Okay. Edwin, what do you think about the new plane? You seen the new bird? I love it, GC man. or 10X on the back? 10X. You I think so? The, yeah, I like the 10X okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're asking I'm people. seeing 10X everywhere, man. It's, it is, man. Yeah, people, I like, I like people, the 10X. It, 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 it's the a thing. It's a movement. It's a movement. Now I can't trade So we getting tried. out of the show, I think yeah. I saw 10X. You think what? Uh, when I was in Vegas, I saw it parked. It said yeah, 10X. Yeah, well, that, that was it. that's it right there.
Yeah. That's the old plane, but the new plane, I'm thinking about putting GC on the back and 10X underneath it, 10X on top. Oh, if, if you can do both, I'd go with those. Yeah. With that, yeah. Okay, hey, thanks for watching Power Players. Call us if you're a power player. If you know somebody in power, I want you on the show. Follow this dude, all right? There is only one company to work for in the smart home industry, Skyline Security. Right now is looking for the best of the Grant Cardone following to join their team and expand financially and professionally. Go to joinskyline.com to register. Labeled by Inc. 5000 as the fastest growing company for the last two years in a row, you get to protect families, grow your wealth, and join a team of top producers. Skyline is looking for great people. Go to joinskyline.com. That's joinskyline.com to get started on a brand new 10x career path go to joinskyline.com to register if you're not satisfied with the status quo if you want to kill the competition if you're ready to grow your business at massive levels I want to take three days to spend time with an exclusive group of people, entrepreneurs, business owners, business managers, coaches, and experts, and show you how to get a competitive edge in your business using social media, using e-commerce, using sales, salespeople, cold calls, follow-up, and a sales cycle and a business cycle that I guarantee you will 10x your business in 2018. I'm doing this at the Diplomat Hotel. I'll take care of your hotel room. I'm gonna spend three days with you and we're gonna focus on a plan that 10X is your business in 2018.